strip the bolts on them. Should have never sent them to pick up the word for them. Spray the park and had my shit inside the car. Marcus Smart Boy was shooting with a 36 on them. Said if he wasn't in a rush, they was all gone. His tech curse all right. Chest, he was gone Sean Greetings, Chudlings. Welcome to another episode of Juddy's Corner. Sponsored by Nick Prano Real Estate. Check out nickprano.com for all your real estate needs. I'm your host, Dugouts. With, with me as always, Chuddy, King Chuddy. How you doing today? Happy birthday, King Chuddy. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's been a pleasant one. Always a joy when it falls on a weekend. I get some guaranteed March Madness. Uh, got treated to a pretty good Celtics game this year, too. So no complaints on my end. Yes, awesome. Good to hear that. The sports calendars are looking fondly <laughs> upon you. <laughs> um, we're going to break down the Celtics, uh, 104-92 win over the New Orleans Pelicans, uh, it's Saturday, March 30th. If I might have already said that when I said it was your birthday, but we'll roll with it. Uh, now every now the Celtics will always remember your birthday. That's all right. Um, but yeah, the Celtics win 104-92, Tatum, uh, 23 points, nine rebounds. Porzingis had 19 points, 10 rebounds. Uh, my app says four blocks, but I could have sworn he had five blocks. I don't know. They always score them weird. But yeah. either way, he was blocking the shit out of everything. Uh, I think this one game got changed was... to a steal, is what happened. <laughs> Ooh, all right. Because he had I'm two square. steals, and I think he had five... When I've looked, he had five blocks, one steal, and then he had four and two. So, okay. that could be, well, could we'll be what happened. That. I think the last one I could see that being a steal. Yeah. It. Well, no. The last one, he... I don't know. Who knows? The <laughs> scorers are mysterious folk. Either way, it was, it was all over the place. On it was all over the place. We're going to talk about it. Um, but yeah, this is sort of a tale of two halves, so I'll go ahead and let you break down this one for everybody. What happened in this game? What'd you see? Yeah, this was a, a really good game. I was excited when I saw that the Celtics injury report was realistically about as clean as it gets. Um, mm. Full full cavalry on deck for this one, going against a Pelicans team that's very much motivated, very much playing well um, in their place. Knew this would be a, a, tough, a tough game and a good test, and it definitely was. Um, Saw that off the jump, the Pelicans came out, and it kind of, again, felt a little like the last few games in March have for the Celtics, where it's not like we're playing bad or anything like that, but we just kind of seemed to step behind them. It seemed like they brought all the energy out of the gates. They were the ones who looked like, you know, this game meant something to them. We looked like we were kind of just out there, um, you know, going like 80 85% through the motions, which, you know, was fine. We weren't getting blown out or anything, but they looked quicker. They were running up and down the court on us. Uh, they had 10 fast break points to our zero uh, five and a half minutes into the game, which is just crazy and kind of shows the difference in the effort right there. Uh, pretty nuts. They really kind of blitzed us. They got up to a pretty early 11 point lead in the first quarter. They were up 34 23. And I think at that point, you kind of saw like what this Pelicans team can be when everything's going for you. We saw Zion was kind of running the show. He was flying up and down. He was getting to his spots, going left, getting to the basket. Um, and then when he wasn't doing that, they were moving the ball around. The guys were hitting threes. And it was like, whoa, I, I, I kind of see it with this Pelicans team. They looked really good. Um, second quarter, you said a tale of two halves, almost a tale of one and three quarters. But either way, the second quarter, I guess, started favorably Gosh, for the Pelicans. People. I didn't want to get into <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's understandable. <laughs> I mean, it was a tale of two halves, just not equal halves. But hmm. um, so in the second quarter is really, I think, where the Celtics committed to the defensive end. And honestly, it was Jalen Brown taking the Zion Williams matchup, which really yeah, that was the game. huge because uh, Zion was kind of dominating us. And honestly, it was we don't really have a great matchup for him because Porzingis and even Al are just like a little too slow as uh, big guys. And then Drew and obviously Derek are just just too small. Um, so he's mm -hmm. like a tough in-between matchup for us. It really has to be one of the Jays. And it was Brown who took on the matchup and did a great job. And he really, he must have read my keys to the game because number one was to do exactly what they did. Um, and that's pressure Zion. Whereas especially without Ingram, the Pelicans don't really have a lot of ball handlers. Their best offense is kind of with point Zion running the show. Uh, you just can't let him get too comfortable. Again, in the first half, we saw it. When he has like a few, even a few feet of a runway just to get to a running moving, start. Yeah. It's it's over. Like there's not much you can do with the guy. He is a absolute wrecking ball, and he can make plays like that too. Um, and again, as we saw, that's when they looked their best. Jalen got into him early on. Didn't really give him any room to operate. Didn't let him get ahead of steam. Um, he wasn't really able to beat him off the dribble. He stopped penetrating, and with it, away went the Pelicans' offense. Um, so I mean, that started little midway through the second uh, quarter and on, but we held him pretty well. Offense didn't come alive too much. Turned into a little bit of a ref show. Uh, crazy <laughs> kind of calls and no calls both ways. Like they were letting them play, but then they called a few ticky-tack calls. 
It kind of spiraled over when Tatum got hit with a ridiculous tech just for basically doing like a wave motion at the The most ridiculous tech. So stupid. Just again, no consistency with what is and isn't a technical, which continues to be the most frustrating thing about the rules in, or, you know, if you can even call them rules at this point. Um, But that was annoying. And then, Brown almost got a technical moments later. Then they got hit with a delay of game call, which was their second. So another free throw. Um, The game was so choppy. And the one thing is you could see the Celtics getting fucking pissed. I think it almost kind of woke them up like because they were (laughs) clearly they were a different team around this point and after it from what we saw before that. So I think the combination of like, it was a tough game. The Pelicans were fighting and getting cocky. The gym was pretty alive. And then the refs got them really pissed off and that changed the game. Um, Especially with our defense, we just focused and we were like, all right, this is how you're going to call it. This is how we're going to play. And the Celtics fucking took over. Um, That was probably the most encouraging stretch of basketball from the Celtics I've seen in a while. Not that they've had you know, a lot of discouraging stuff, but it was like, they really locked in. <laughs> Well, no, but like under the last, no, two games. I mean, the last two games, not great, but I mean, even the last game was not like they, you know, it went to overtime. It wasn't like they played poorly, uh, whatever. I mean, not the point, right. but, but Tomatoes. this was different. The, yeah, exactly. The full lineup was back. And for, you know, at least the second and third quarter, uh, we saw like them fully locked in, especially on the defensive end. And it was absolutely smothering. Um, finished off that first half after the technicals or uh, after the the second technical, whatever you want to call it, the Celtics um, immediately came out, I think hit a three, right? Tatum hit a step back three. Then they got a steal. Uh, Drew pushed it ahead, Tatum, and just dunked it basically over two guys in transition. And then the Celtics got another block right at the rim. Uh, I think Porzingis got that one, pushed it ahead to Derek. Uh, The Pelicans were also complaining. He ran up and hit like a 30-footer at the buzzer. It was an eight zero run in like a minute. Somehow yeah. the Celtics went into the locker room with the lead, where it felt like <laughs> it felt like they no outplayed sense. us for like eighteen yeah, yeah. to twenty minutes. Suddenly we're going in with a lead, and all kinds of fired up. Uh, you could tell, and that completely carried over to the third quarter, which is frankly one of the best defensive quarters the Celtics have played in a long ass time. Uh, I don't think that's hyperbolic to say. With the way the Pelicans' offense has been going, held them to eleven points, and it really it wasn't even missed shots. It was just absolutely smothering defense. Um, I, I don't even know what to say other than it was just awesome. And it's great to see that, again, you know, where we do worry about some of these past few games, it's like, okay, the Celtics have a different level on defense. And this is still the team's calling card. As good as we are on offense, when we lock in like this on defense, I mean, that's where you see, like, looking Scary like a championship stuff. team. Exactly. And the and it's kind of cliche, but the defense truly does lead to offense. Like, when we're playing like that on the defensive end, we're getting out and running. We're getting transition points. We're, you know, a step ahead of them on the other end. We're moving the ball around, getting the defensive rotation, setting up easy shots. They're having a tough time matching up, all that kind of stuff. And you saw it. I mean, that third quarter was basically an avalanche. Our offense didn't even play great, but, uh, you know, good enough. And, again, holding them to 11 points, we were blocking all kinds of shots at the rim, uh, making all kinds of steals, but mostly just – really playing good defense and not giving up good shots uh, even when we weren't turning them over so that was great to see carried on into the fourth quarter we pushed the lead up over 20 i think we were up 22 or something at one point had a huge run and it really seemed like they just could not do anything um on offense you mentioned porzingis earlier he had a huge game around the rim which was nice to see him bounce back after those hawks games where it seemed like he's kind of getting a little bit dominated inside by capella he more than held his own he had several blocks on zion around the rim um, yeah. the Pelicans, I think I've mentioned this earlier in the year, but it's still kind of weird to me how much they seem to think their best lineup is with Larry Nance at center. Um, they started Valanchunas in the first quarter and I thought he's, you know, kind of create some problems for us. And then they started Nance in the second half, which is obviously when we made our huge run. I'm not saying it's directly related to that, but just think it's very weird how they kind of manage their center rotation. But, uh, I digress. Um, Pelicans made a bit of a run in the fourth quarter. I think they had an 8 run and then like a 6 run. Maybe got it down to 12 or so. But every time the Celtics kind of needed to make a play to keep them far enough away, they did it. Uh, they ran a nice pick and pop three to Tatum. Got a great look. That stretched it back to 15 at one point. Um, and then Derek White hit a dagger three with about a minute and a half left. That was uh, – Pretty much the final nail in the coffin. So very nice road win over a, a very good playoff team that is very much engaged. So again, we know we're not going to get this from the Celtics for every regular season game, nor do we need to. But we both said we do want to see the whole group playing together mm. and a chance to you know play with purpose and get into a bit of a rhythm for the playoffs. And I felt like that's exactly what today was. Yeah, this was uh, – so <clears throat> I was really impressed by the Pelicans, especially in that first quarter. I thought that their defense looked good. Our yeah. offense was kind of asleep a little bit too, but I think it was what their defense was doing. Zion, I'm super impressed by. He um, 
like for all the stuff that he was getting early in the season, like it definitely looks like, like I think uh, Eddie House said it too. He's like, I don't think he lost 25 pounds, but he definitely looks like he's in like better shape. Cause like, I don't know, 25 pounds. That's just a shitload of weight, but yeah. he just looks in a lot better shape. He seems to be moving a it's, lot yeah. better. So definitely. Um, the team looked really good. And like, even, um, you know, the second quarter was definitely a little bit more of like kind of probably indicative of what, uh, you know, these two teams are, I think the second quarter. So yeah, the first quarter, it was 37, 28. And then we outscored him 31, 20 in the second. So, yeah. And okay, I don't think they, we allowed 25 points for another quarter, right? After that 37. No, well, yeah, I was going to I was going to get to the third quarter too. Minutes. The third quarter was awesome, but <laughs> yes. um but yeah, so it was kind of like they, they looked really good, but then again, like you said, there's another level this Celtics team has and that's on the defensive end and they locked in that third quarter. They let up they had the Pelicans scored 11 points in the whole third quarter. They shot 4 from 23 from the field. In the in the entire third quarter, there was a stretch of like five or six minutes where they didn't score. It got to the point too where there was a few plays where like it was like none of them even wanted to be the one to shoot. <laughs> like they passed. Mm-hmm. There was a few times they were passing up some good looks. Like you didn't hear the crowd like making noise. Like what the hell? Um. So just like a super impressive uh like win for for the Celtics the way that they kind of just took that first quarter thirty seven points. Like we don't see this team let out thirty seven points all that often. So no. um to sort of like realize that it's starting with the defense and, and just be able to click that on like that. Um, it was good to see because, again, the two Hawks games, we're not reading too much into that. But it's hard. It's in the back of your head that they're kind of like, okay, what's happening here? So it was nice to see that focus <laughs> get snipped, slipped yeah. back in, um, which which for me was probably the most most encouraging thing, just the way they were able to click on that defense. Um, I had a couple. Uh, I do agree with you about uh, – just the way that Jalen stepped up and covered uh, Porzingis, uh, or I'm sorry, Zion. <laughs> Zion. Hello, uh, it's been a long day. Um, Porzingis, <laughs> uh, he also was looking pretty good. I still yeah. feel like his three shot. He's almost like a little like afraid of the three. I don't know what's going on. He's kind of been hasn't been in it, but he was money from the post. Um, I think that that they kept on just getting him mismatches to to yeah. CJ McCollum. Um, which like if you're CJ McCollum, that's gonna be like the shittiest feeling. Exactly, that's gonna be like the shittiest feeling in the whole entire world. Yeah. Um, when you realize that you have Chris Das Porzingis on you, um, not great. So yeah, I mean, this was just this was like a very it was kind of like an exciting game. It was a fun game, uh, even though for the whole most of the second half we had between like a fifteen and twenty point lead, it still felt like a very like kind of like intense and exciting game. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this was this was a nice enjoyable little Saturday weird start time. <laughs> Um, Very weird. But it was enjoyable. Yeah, I like this one. This Definitely was a fun enjoyable. Game. Good win for the Celtics. Yeah, um, absolutely. I think the Zion thing, too. Remember, if you remember the first time we played them, remember it was noticeable. We were both talking about how he clearly, like, it was like he could only play six minutes at a time. He yeah. just was only playing 30 minutes. He was you sweating he was, so he much. He was laboring up and down the court. Yeah. yeah, they had to call timeouts. I remember Eddie was, or Scal, whoever was announcing, was like, why don't they have Zion in the game? And we're like, because he looks like he's going to have a heart attack. Like, what are you talking yeah. about? So yeah. just that, just like the eye test alone, when you can tell that big of a difference in, a, in an NBA player's, like, yeah. overall fitness is, is pretty notable. So for him to make that change in one season, I mean, hopefully it's this is like a light bulb moment for him and things have clicked and this is the kind of commitment to basketball we'll get for the rest of his career because he should be a really fun player to watch. Um, but having said that, it's even like more impressive how much the Celtics locked in on defense and were able yeah. to shut them down. Obviously, they had no Brandon Ingram, but still, they got a really talented roster with a lot of good players, um, a lot of guys who can hit shots and make plays, and they just weren't able to when the Celtics turned the water off. And how we said this is really the defining thing or can be for the Celtics. It's it's so true because a, in those two Hawks games, you never saw the Celtics play this level of defense, like no. for more than a possession or two at a time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's one of the things where when you want to be like, you know, are you mad about this loss? Like, yeah, it sucks, but we just know that that's not what this team can and should be. And the other thing yeah. is when we always see like people, lo- you know, we'll have a, impressive win where we absolutely dominate some team and run them out of the gym and people will be like, yeah, okay. But you know, what about when the shots aren't falling or like you can't rely on this three point variance because that's not going to be there. And like, yeah, there will be games where we don't score 140 points and hit 25 threes. That's sure. But we can play this defense every single game in the playoffs. Like that's something that you don't have to worry about shots going in or variance yep. and luck. And like, yeah, you can play like this and the other team can just shoot amazingly and make really hard shots the entire game. But like, You'll live with that. You'll take and, your chances, you know, yeah. Exactly. For that, to, if that happens four out of seven times, then you kind of just have to tip your cap and be like, "Well, holy shit!" You know, they did that. But if the Celtics play defense like this throughout the playoffs, it's going to be really hard for any team to beat them. So it's exciting. It's not like anything we haven't seen before, but it does feel like we haven't seen that in a while. Again, understandably, they don't need to, but it's good to see them yeah, have yeah. like a little tune-up like this against a good team. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think uh, 
I want to I want to take a second too and get a little bit into just the the refereeing because for the first <laughs> like until that whole shit show that you know you you you, you alluded to and we're going to talk about a little bit more now. I felt like this was like a really good, like the refs were just kind of letting a lot of things go and it was great and I feel like we've yeah. noticed that a lot. I know we talked a little bit about like maybe was there like a thing where the refs have to definitely on start letting things slide. I thought that it was a really well officiated game until the the wheels just kind of fell off at that one point. The Tatum Tech, so for anyone who didn't see it, if you're watching on the YouTube or anything like that, he literally just kind of gave like did like just one of these like nah, like I I don't I don't agree with that. Yeah. And Tony Brothers, not even the ref he did it towards, right. Tony Brothers from like fifty feet away <laughs> called a technical on that. Like so I stupid. don't know what like to me, first of all, I hate that you can get a technical just for like yelling at a ref. I think I don't know. Pay the refs more so that the the players can do it or something like that. <laughs> um but it's just like that you're now entering like the the point with it with calling a tech on something like that you're almost entering the point where it's like you not only can you not disagree with the call you like you have to actually like agree with the call you have to like be like okay great like that was good no good call like even if it's not like the whole <laughs> idea of the text was that you can't get like berated right he, that's the opposite of like to me that's like an appropriate this is like what you would want like, them to do right. right that's like an appropriate he yeah. didn't like he didn't do like two hands like oh no he just kind of like it was like it was like, you oh, whatever. It. If you put the second, you would have missed it, right? And then he was moving right. back onto the game, and then so for them to call a tech on that, the delay of game he got later on too. I didn't even think that Tatum touched the ball. I thought that that's just when like four people go up, the ball gets knocked around. Yeah. Like I don't so stupid. Uh, it was so just stupid. it was pretty crazy. I mean, Tony Brothers is the worst. I think that he's again he's, he's on one the of those, like list. old guard refs that like mm-hmm. that. I just it just you can't get the stink off those guys from with some of the stuff that happened before. So. It just you know they were talking a little bit about the refs who really like to be on TV and House was saying that he's one of them. So definitely that that was just an awful, awful, awful time to go on Tatum. Uh, but I do think that it woke him up. I think it pissed him off. So it it, it, it donkey it helped. Later on. Yeah, was, yeah. That was like you two seconds tell. later. Yeah, and that was, was yeah. No, I mean he always tends to get pissed and kind of like raise his level when, which is great. You know, it's like he did yeah. instead of getting pissed at the refs because again that little sequence we take it for granted now, but it wasn't that long ago where a two minute sequence of refing like that. Could have derailed the Celtics, whereas to the see them, team, yeah, it's right. to be instead it was like the jumping off point for this. Ma- they went on like a 35-12 run, I think, from there to the end of the third quarter. So yeah. uh, it's safe to say they took the opposite approach. So for all the people who hate that, think still think that you know Tatum complains too much or this and that, it's like again, just the difference in what they call. And I, even if if like I hated the rules, but they were consistent, like if you just write in the rule, like the following things will result in a technical foul. Boom, 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 boom. But again, just to think that every player who does exactly what Tatum just did to every ref. Like, wh- what do you get a technical? Like, one out of 50 times, that's a technical. So this yeah. time, the guy just decides it's going to be like, if that's a rule, fine. But then enforce it every time someone does it. Like, which would I mean, suck, yeah, but then at least it's like, okay, that's do. the rule. Where it's like, now there's no rule. If Tatum had stayed there and lingered for 10 seconds and chewed out the ref, he probably wouldn't have even gotten a technical. So, you know what I mean? Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so yeah. crazy. Like, what are you trying to accomplish with some of these rules? Like, I can live with a rule if there's logic, consistency behind it. But with this one, it's just like, nah, I didn't, you know, I didn't really like that. Like, technical, boom. This guy's complaining for 30 seconds. Okay, fine, whatever. Like, yeah. make up your mind and just, I don't know. It's so crazy to see what I can't some think guys of, like, do. a more appropriate way to, like, signal that you disagree with the call. Like, <laughs> literally. And again, like, he, don't just, have to he was running away. He was already he running back. On the- yeah, exactly. He wasn't showboating. He wasn't showing up anybody. It's just, it like, it's just, be- a, yeah. it's just a hand wave. Like, I don't know. It's crazy. It was, oh, it wasn't like demeaning. It was literally basically just him being like, I don't agree with the call, but whatever. I'm moving on. And yeah. He already turned out. around and ran away. And like you said, and the fact that it wasn't the ref across. that he did it to. It's like the ref that he did it to was just right. like, was even just like, all right. Like, oh, yeah. That's that. Breakfast was like, oh, that's, I thought I was going to get worse. <laughs> and yeah. Tony Brothers from fucking Boston <laughs> chimes in. It's just crazy. That uh, is but super yeah. frustrating. I want to go ahead and, and call um, them fucking idiots for that. So. Yeah, and as bad as all the ref stuff is, we always complain about it. I think the technicals are the most frustrating because it does seem like there isn't even a rule. Like, could someone come out and say, like, okay, so waving it's to an official is power. a technical? Like, that's a, a, right. officially saying that's a technical now going forward? Like, everyone's on the same page? Because otherwise we're going to see someone. I'll probably see in the next three nights someone do that exact same thing and not get a technical. And isn't Tony that's Brothers the guy who has, like, the quote where he's like, I'm judge, yeah. jury, and execution. Yeah, it's like, it, and he doesn't even like basketball. Yeah, oh, my God. <laughs> I know. Okay. Yep. Uh, but yeah, that, Not was, a fan. that was really bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. <laughs> do you, uh, do you have, uh, what else do you have anything on, on like this game in particular? I just uh, have a couple just of like, the... not full game related things, but. 
The only a couple of scary falls for Jalen tonight. I don't yeah. know if it was his shoes, oh the court, or what, but he had he slipped. He had a steal that looked like it was going to be a sick uh, strip six, and he just fell. They still managed to like get a put back. He got up, was fine, but then he had another one where he went down and was holding his knee immediately, and I was, I was like non contact. Yeah, I was extremely nervous. Um, and com- it came out of commercial. He was just back in the game. So like, all right, that's chill. Um, and then he had another fall late in the game that didn't look good either. So, like I said, I don't know if it was the shoes, the court, or what, but it seemed like it was really only him that I was noticing on and um yeah not something you want to see no and, and he was getting bruised up enough trying to cover his eye on too it does yeah. a few plays too where it's just like he's just getting beaten up there so yeah definitely there was definitely something going on there like uh like at first I, I saw him like pointing to the like squeegee people being like what the you know but then he, he said he slipped a few more times they were saying like stuff about his like shoes too I always like I always feel like when they're like, they're kind of trying to be like, I can't tell what shoes he's wearing because I feel like they didn't want to be, like, chirping it if it's, like, mm-hmm. his, like, signature shoe or right. something. Like, which I don't know if he has. I think he said he was coming out with a signature shoe. Yeah, I don't shoe. think he I don't has, know one. If he has Are one yet. Uh... Why don't they all wear Tatums? They should just all wear Tatums. Yeah. Maybe. The hell? Yeah, it's bullshit. I feel like, isn't that, like, awkward? Like, it's got to be, like, that, that's, I mean, it kind of goes into the Grant Williams thing where he didn't want to wear the Lucas, but. Um, I don't know. Why does him oh, Richard okay. wear, like, Tatums? What does you wear? I think he honestly might. I think Pritchard's oh, okay. one of the only guys who does. I, I don't know, but either way. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. some of the guys do have, like, shoe deals, even if they don't have their own signature shoe. So it could be something okay. like that. Or someone signed to, like, right, like I have to a wear, like, Adidas, and they can't yeah. wear it. Yeah, so that could be part of it. But overall, like, I don't really know that much about the process of all these guys and stuff, which yeah. they're going to wear. They don't like have they're tiptoeing around, like, calling out the shoes because they were kind of like, wait, hold on. Yeah. I know that we don't want to piss anybody off. <laughs> Like, are those um, sketches? Yeah, no, that was that was scary. <laughs> yeah, I hope that I hope that there's no like long term. There was one point dude who was I mean, grabbing he, his left wrist too. Yeah, he know. stayed in the. He finished the game, and again, it was just like a very physical game that he was a part of and played really well. So no lingering effects. Nothing I've heard, obviously, yet. But uh, yeah, you know, a few. Spooky. Like I said, well, let's get a few games like this where the team really ramps it up, and then otherwise, you know, keep mixing the rest against the uh, you know, the Hornets on Monday nights of the world. Yeah. Well, you know, Tatum like Tatum's not going to rest in that game. He's made clear that the Hornets <laughs> yes. are not national TV or whatever, whatever that line was. That's true. Um, so I just, had, I just had one other kind of not game related observation. Okay. Um, so like they've started to do obviously, I think it was started this year. They might have done it last year. Where like they slip in a commercial during like the free throws now, which is like mm-hmm. it is what it is. Whatever. It's usually the Zenny one. The Zenny one. Um, yeah. Shout out Zenny. You want to sponsor the pod? Shout out. Um, if you don't, shout out rescinded. Um. But the one they had with Mike just like hawking Alakash white beer was oh, like yeah. to me that was like that was the weirdest thing that was like that felt like something that was like out of like the seventies of just like you know, like the like grandfather being yeah. like you know me I like a nice cool refreshing beach right. with it it's just like it was just so funny that was just I I was literally like I the, <laughs> when it first came out I just kind of was like. What the fuck was that? That's like, is Mike just like, there's like, you know what? I can get like one quick glass payday before I'm yeah. done. Like the, well, but it, it's it literally for Moderna. Like, I was though, just remember? waiting for him to be like, mm, like yeah, that's right. that out of gas white. <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah, it just seems such funny. a weird thing for him to be like a beard just in general, but also just out of gas white is a wicked random one too. So. <laughs> Like, yeah, I don't know. Uh, was, yeah, I don't, I don't, they've definitely that. started mixing those in recently. They used to have them doing the Moderna one, and then you mentioned the yeah. Sam Cassell's Zenny one. So I think it is, like you said, it's one of those things where it's like uh, they're feeling it out of like sneaking in this extra ad, and they're like, well, we're at least going to put like Boston <laughs> people they love in the ads. It's like, well, if you yeah, showed us yeah. Gorman, it's like, how we can't be that pissed. You know, it's like Cassell's right, in the right. Zenny ads. So I was like, all right, but this is like step one to like <laughs> a full commercial break between free throws or something, like, you yeah. know. They're like feeling this out, but yeah, it, was a fun, it is funny too. to see the first time it came off for sure. <laughs> it just was like so weird. I don't know. I'm just, I just can't, I can't like help a picture now. Mike just like at the bar, just like crushing like Allagash Whites. I don't know. Good for uh, him. Yeah, no, I mean, I, be I, awesome. like that. I would love to get, a, I'd love to drink an Allagash White with uh, yeah. Mike Gorman. Yeah, he's probably the only person I would drink an Allagash White with. Um, but shout out Allagash White too if they want to sponsor the pod. If not, shout out rescinded. Um, yeah, but sounds all right. <laughs> but yes, that was uh, that was probably like one of uh, the funnier moments too. <laughs> I was watching this game too, so we're recording a little bit later today because I uh, I had to watch the whole game on record. Uh, I, I, I DVR the game, so when I got home to watch it, I set it for my phone. So when I got like I just was kind of rushing. I was at my other job, um, and <laughs> when I get home, I go to put the game on. I recorded the whole game. In standard definitions, so I 
shout out, you know, to me. Uh, thank you for my service. Uh, watching an entire game, I have a giant like fifty eight inch screen TV, and it's like it's just like 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 less than half of it. Like it's just so much black like screen like all around it. Um, Love that. When they had Tillman and Horford out there, it was fucking hell for me. I didn't know Hopeless. who the hell was who. I didn't know who was who. Um, but it was crazy. The game had a real and in the score too, one hundred four ninety two. It, it like it really felt like one of those like late 90s early 2000s games for nice me, physical so. back and forth yeah so Took yeah right when I got home <laughs> i saw what i did i just was like i was just like oh my and i was like there has to be a way to like you had to have recorded both but it didn't so mm. uh shout out to me uh watch the whole entire game in standard yeah. death i think everyone yeah. should do that at least once a year watch a game in standard death just to get it does it, i don't know it kind of you know it's a little bit of a reflective time maybe it's the holiday tomorrow but you know you just sort of look back and get a little thankful for the things that you do have there you go um, definitely makes you appreciate it yeah yeah um so yeah that was fun so i had to watch the game on record watching games on record too by the way is like the greatest it's so awesome it's like nice. i just wield so much power with that remote like just just like doo -doo -doo, like just squeezing in like this looks like it might be like a 15 second like break and play like boom, boom <laughs> jumping ahead um yeah it's fun. Uh, so it I is mean, cool. The one thing I will say, as you know, as it's all all fans probably know about the setup at the Chuddy Dome by now, it's really tough if you would like to watch other games uh, at the same time because you, you know those the bottom those lines. bottom lines can be absolutely deadly. And I've gotten got once or twice. Yeah. It's not fun. It's a really shitty feeling. Yeah, this was literally this was kind of like the first. I feel like I've done this before in the past, but like where I've had to like work at the bar and it's like a Tuesday night. Where I'm kind of like not paying attention, but I had to give him record, and I'll go home and kind of so I like sort of know what's going on. This was really the first time like I got home, the game was completely already over, and I literally had no idea what happened. It was kind of cool. Like again, I had like almost like a '90s feel to it. Like where it's just <laughs> like you know, I wasn't looking at my phone. Um, you know, I had someone call. I did like the Jerry Seinfeld. Like if you know what happened in the Met game, don't know what happened. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, it was a it was a, it was a good experience. But yeah, the whole thing was in standard definition. So I turned back the clock. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm glad I did it because it was it was a very exciting game. Yeah. So it's like Joe says, um, you know, every game is a is a learning opportunity. So great, great learning experience for you, and I'm yeah. sure you won't make that mistake again. You're you're, just, a, you're a better recorder. I'm be I'm a better recorder, but again, I don't even know how I did it. Like I I went to the channel and hit record. I must have just been in the non HD channels or something. I don't know. Clearly, um, standard death. But yeah. yeah, I did it as a rush. But yeah, I guess uh, tomorrow I'll be a better recorder than I was today. So that's uh, there's no losses. It's just teachable moments. So. Mm -hmm. Amen. But yeah, so shout out to that. Shout out to Mike Corman's beer ad. Love it. Unreal stuff. Um, <laughs> all right, do you got anything else uh, on this game in particular here? No, I think that's it. Good win. All right, let's. Uh, yeah, so again, Celtics get the one hundred four ninety two win. Tatum think, uh... twenty three points, nine rebounds. Uh, Jalen seventeen points, seven rebounds, six assists. Porzingis nineteen points, ten rebounds. Four blocks, two steals, as the score has determined. <laughs> uh, Derek White, 15, 3, and 3. Yeah. Holiday, 13, 8, and 7. Great He's balance. back to having those good old holiday, holiday stat lines. Yeah, great balance. And uh, Horford chipped in nine points, two, six rebounds. So um, it was a great game, fun game, awesome game. Uh, we're going to kick it over to around the NBA now. Uh, so what do you have for us? Uh, what's going on around the league, Chud? So around the league, uh, this I think dropped while we were actually recording last time, but forgot to mention it. And that is that LaMelo Ball, who has been out most of the season anyway, but was officially ruled out for the rest of the season. Um, just like shitty to see and almost worrisome. Wait, I think he's they now announced that like with six games left. Well, like 10, but yeah. 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 Know. Are they even in the playoffs? The Hornets? No, obviously not, right? No. <laughs> Not even close. I don't know. Well, I don't, yeah, they're not. They're not. We talk about the plan every week. I don't know why I asked that yeah. question. Well, but that, but it's kind of like okay. Did, okay, they, did yeah, people yeah, think Hornets, he was coming to come back for ten yes. years? If he should, if he can play, he should absolutely come back. He's been in yeah, the league for four years. Think he's he was played, going to. Yes, he's been really? questionable. He's been questionable with a sore. He came, so he's he hurt his ankle. He came back, played in three games. The next game, he was questionable with a sore ankle, missed the game. Then he was questionable for like 20 games with ankle soreness, and he's just now out for the year. He'll have just okay. like I thought that it was, I didn't realize he was questionable every night. He, I mean, he, until for a while he was, and there was no ch it, new injury. His ankle right. just like didn't heal well. So for me, this team absolutely blows. He just got a massive deal. They just drafted Brandon Miller, who looks good. Um, you got to get out there and play. Like this team just needs reps. If he can play, I don't think you're shutting him down. Like your draft pick is bad enough. Yeah, yeah. Your seat, your franchise sucks. Like this is, 
I, I eyebrow raising to me at the at the very least. Like Lamelo, he his second year, he played I think seventy something games. He made the All Star team. He was really really good. Um, other than that, like he basically just hasn't stayed on the court at all. Um, and I think we're at like a reckoning point where it's like, all right, it's going to be year five. Are you like a serious player? Yeah. Like, what are we doing here? You know. Um, otherwise, it's like we can just build around Brandon Miller, maybe trade Lamelo for close to full value before it gets worse than this. Cause I mean, I, I already, I don't know what his trade value would be right now with that contract. And again, I he's played like 50 something games over the past two seasons. It's pretty gruesome. Um, I don't know. It just sucks. Like a young player who I, like I said, yeah. after a second year, you were thinking one of the brightest young stars in the league. Now I'm like, I don't even know if I would want him on my team, like for that contract. Yeah, he just and, said it was a guy too. who's not going to go out there and play when the season's basically over. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's I like guess. people have expected it, but it's just kind of like, yeah, I don't know. If you told me that, do you think Little Mellow? If you told me like before the news came out, do you think he's going to come back? Like, why the fuck would he come back? I agree, you should. I'm not saying like, I'm it, not saying like I, everything you just said is valid for why. Like, right. breath and stuff, but I'm just saying like, I, like I wouldn't expect him to. But all right, so Little Mellow <laughs> out for the year. Lamelo, shut it down. It's official. Um, oh, he's the last. He's the last of the I the know. dynasty. Wow. He he was supposed wow. to be the one. And yeah, and he it was looking like he was gonna. I mean, again, this isn't mostly related to injury like otherwise when he has played he's played at a pretty much a consistently all-star what? near all-star level and he's still yeah. only like 20 what's like the two years Obi-Wan old, kenobi so. line and uh to anakin like you're supposed to be the one to like save the force not he's, destroy yeah. it you were that's the chosen like, one that's him with the lonzo ball the the ball family perhaps although lonzo there has been some positive news that he might actually return next season so we'll see yeah. we'll see a lot of a lot big season next year for the ball family it's march and you're saying he might return next season it's just kind of like well, that's not a great sign i know but he's been out for like two years in a row yeah, yeah, yeah. So he's played kind of like February 22 so it's not great yeah. um but anyway we'll see like i said big 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 year for the ball family coming up to see if they have big NBA show legs. me year yep um, all right, getting some game action last night. Uh, awesome win for the Spurs over the Knicks overtime. This game was mostly crazy because Jalen Brunson absolutely went off. 61 points for the Knicks. Uh, not quite good enough to unseat Carmelo Anthony for the franchise record, but a nice night mm. less for Brunson. But it came in a losing effort to the Spurs as Wemby put up 40 and 20. Uh, just an absurd night for Wembenyama. Really good game, really fun game. Um, I mean, again, just so cool that, you know, this team that doesn't really have much to play for, but he's just such a spectacle to watch that you're enjoying this yeah. game, like you said, at the end of March, that would otherwise be pretty meaningless. So his I'm going of... to come a little bit off my take, Zion or um, Wemby, maybe not a boss. Might not be a boss. <laughs> Interesting. Could be. Uh, he might not be a boss. Could be paired with Lamelo Ball next season. Who knows? Really? Yeah. Oh, they oh, no, I'm just saying if the Hornets do decide uh, to trade him, like uh, that'd be a great team for him to go to. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? They've been talking about like Trey Young maybe being traded to the Spurs. I feel like Lamelo is kind of similar mm. idea behind it, but a little different. Um, oh, did you see too in that game too? Wemby at the buzzer just hucking the ball into the crowd. <laughs> the game love ball, that. love That's that. Awesome, yeah, that was great. <laughs> they like the video of it. They cut like the Jalen Brunson. Like the video just cuts him like a second and. It makes it look like I doubt he's even is looking in that direction, but it does make it in the video of what he does it like it cut the way it cuts him. It does it kind of seems like he's just like looking like oh man, like I wanted that ball. <laughs> like what the hell? <laughs> but it's a, it's a loss. It's like you can't really. But right. I doubt it was what he was looking at. But like the way the the cameras cut it, it definitely looked that way. It's pretty funny. I like that. Um, but anyway, fun stuff. Um, then a couple Western Conference notes. The um, not. Not any reason for concern, but something a little to monitor, as we said, when the Celtics lost back-to-back games to the Hawks. The Nuggets have now lost back-to-back games, both of them at home. Both of them, they scored under 100 points. Uh, Jamal Murray's now missed four games in a row. He hurt his ankle, missed the first two games, was listed with a sprained ankle. The last two games, he's been listed with knee inflammation. So four missed games in a row for Murray with knee and ankle problems. Like Uh I said, no reason for concern yet, but... They mm. certainly don't look very good without him. And now uh, Jokic, who's been on the injury report, playing through everything, is about to get an MVP. But last night against Minnesota in what was, you know, essentially a game for the one seed, where I don't know how much they care, but the Wolves blew the Nuggets out. Um, Jokic was getting his, his wrist at, looked at throughout the game. And after the game, Coach Michael Malone in his press conference said he was surprised Jokic played um, with the injury, oh. which to me is just Oop. like, okay, then why is he playing? Like, 
<laughs> Absolutely crazy. Can. Miles How can Turner, we do you know, that? <laughs> right, like, not exactly, I don't know. If Tatum was, like, questionable at this point in the season and after the game, Zula was like, yeah, I can't believe you played through that, I'd be like, what the fuck? Like, why Why would we do that? Um, I mean, I guess, like I said, they are definitely still competing for the one seed, but, I mean, if I'm Denver, it's like, you've already won it all. What do you care if OKC yeah. or Minnesota gets home court over you, like, at the point to, that you're sending out a less than 100% Jokic to me is – Absolutely psychotic behavior by uh, whoever is involved in that one. So, and I did see already that he's probable for the next game. So, not even going to miss a game with that. But like I said, little skid they have dropped to third in the conference. Um, so you know, probably just more than anything, them uh, coasting, gearing up for the playoffs. But it does go to show they're not a very deep team. And uh, you know, one of these guys gets injured, and suddenly things are a lot more wide open out west. So, like I said, for now, just something to keep an eye on. Um, and you know, we will. Um, also in the West, this is more than something to keep an eye on, and that is brutal, brutal news for the Sacramento Kings. Uh, one of last year's feel-good stories as they were the three seed in the yeah. West, uh, lost a tough one, come back this year trying to build on that. Um, they've been, I'd say, good but inconsistent. They've been battling. You know, the West is loaded, so it's not like they've been bad, but battling for basically to stay out of the play-in most of the year. They were in that sixth spot. Uh, they've fallen. I think they're in seventh or eighth right now, and then they just got word that Kevin Herter is out for the season. Um, he's going to undergo surgery at the game. Right. Bailey Mueller. <laughs> yeah, good one. Um, <laughs> he has a torn labrum, but he's out for the season. Mm, sorry. And then even worse news uh, today, Malik Monk sprained ACL. He'll be out four to six weeks. Uh, so basically he's done he? here unless they make the Western Conference Finals, which without those two guys is very unlikely. Still have Fox and Sabonis, but uh, Monk is pro- – I would say the third best player on offense for sure. And Herter is, you know, not too far behind two of their best shooters. Um, and it's at least like their fifth starter and, you know, Monk's in line. to he's the favorite to win six man of the year. He's been absolutely awesome for them. I think he can still win the award I was seeing though. Cause I guess the playing time rule doesn't apply for six man of the year, uh, which is kind of interesting, but hmm. he will still be eligible to win that. Um, I don't know if this will affect it or not, but either way, brutal blow for Sacramento losing two rotation players, basically two weeks before the play in uh, that they'll now likely have to play uh, in. the beam. Yeah. It's a shame. I heard a peep about the beam all year this year. All I heard was beam, beam, beam last year. Yeah. Well, I heard you know, peep about the beam. it's what they always say with these franchises. Then it's never better than when you have no expectations that first year where, yeah, it's you know, true. Yeah. and now as soon as they won last year, they get some expectations and the, the fun has just been zapped. <laughs> <laughs> sucks. But for the record, they do still do the beam stuff and they do light the beam and they do chant yeah, like yeah, beam no, in the arena. Yeah, 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 just, yeah. yeah. You're right. It, last year it was like, holy shit, the Kings don't it's just suck at <laughs> yeah, Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And now it's going to be like, oh, another year they don't even win a playoff series. Like, what? Like, Did you see Luca? It up? Was it Luca that they played last night? With yeah. The, with the Mavs? Did you yeah. see that? Like, I don't know if you were going to talk about it, but. Like Luca hit like a I guess game winning game go ahead shot or game ice like shot dagger, or something. Yeah. Um, and he like there like the caption was that I saw on the tweet was like that he was pointing at Vladi Divac and being mm-hmm. like like you should have drafted me like blah blah blah. And it's just like to me that's weird if you're like on the if you're like the maps like it, it's like well dude no like I'm glad he didn't draft you it's just kind of like it's like did you want to go there like I'm sorry like did you want to play for the Kings right like, well so there's a little more weird. I think there's a little more to this I think for the fact that like Vlade is also an Eastern European NBA player I'm pretty sure they had a good relationship and he was over there like involved with Luca at a young age so that's like arguably the weirdest part of the whole thing is like if anyone should have been all over Luca and how sick he was gonna be no, it was yeah. Vlade like so that in itself is weird because I think they had somewhat of a connection I don't know how mm-hmm. serious like the chirp was last night or if they're still friends and he was just kind of more like teasing him than anything else. But it is crazy. Everyone always kind of like talks about the Aiton pick uh, for Luca and like the Luca trade for Trey Young. But it almost gets forgotten that the Kings had the second pick and took Marvin Bagley, which is absolutely hilarious. Um, oh, wow. So yeah, that's bad. That's it's really a bad. to chirp. And I'll, I mean, you know how much these pro athletes like what was the going yeah, on? Yeah, you got to like, find an edge. got taken ahead of him. Like they're yeah. all obsessed with that stuff. So, again, I just feel like it's like if you're the Mavs, I thought they would be a little bit weird. But you're just like, well, yeah. are you glad they didn't? Right. <laughs> yeah. like, By the way, like I still want to be in the team. So trade for me. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, like yeah. hit him yeah. agent. Like free agency's coming soon. Like, <laughs> right. Don't fuck it up again, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I but, don't know. it's probably. But yeah, it's, it's probably, probably, probably just an edge. I'm sure they're fine, but I just thought, watching yeah. you know, it, I was just like, I feel like it just was like, if I was a Mavs fan, I'd be like, well, dude, I'm glad they didn't. Fuck. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Like, but 
I don't, I don't think it's unfair to remind the guy sitting courtside. It's kind of funny. Right. Oh, yeah, 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 sure. And again, like, I do think there was a little extra there just between. Was he taking third? Two. Were the, the Mavs pick third? Well, the Hawks had the third pick, yeah, and traded for out of the spot. But... Oh, okay, right. right. Yeah. So there's no one else. So who who had first? Do you remember who had first in that draft? Yeah, the Suns took Aiton. Oh, oh, geez. Yeah, that's two shit picks for, compared to Luca, yeah. He well, did the same yeah. thing for the Suns guys. Well, right, but I'm saying that's. They, They're they, not they, Eastern they European. Do. Well, no, but the Suns do get chirped. I'm saying that the Kings, I feel like, don't get chirped as much for it because they're just, like, the forgotten team that was in between. Oh. Like, everyone's like, how could the Suns not do this? But you have to remember at the time, Aiton was, like, a dominant college center. He played at Arizona, so, like, they already had it built yeah, in. The yeah, yeah. And they did make the NBA Finals with him as their starting center and playing really well. So that one, to me, like, Bagley was just... The Bagley one, yeah. He just sucks. Like, yes, yeah. <laughs> like Aiton was, was bad, but that one was really bad. And especially when you factor in that Divac already had a relationship so it wasn't like just some team with some like old school xenophobe over owners like yeah europeans are soft like they can't hack it in the league it's like yeah dude, th- this is like my boy like <laughs> yeah so, I don't that's know. fair but also worth pointing out that that was one of those like we just had that little two-game home series in atlanta the kings and mavericks just had that same thing in sacramento and the mavs won both games um so even more bad news for the Kings to go along with their injury woes. They really needed those games. They uh, Mavs have separated themselves a little bit. They've won 10 out of 11, and Luka and Kyrie Ooh. playing really well together lately. So uh, that'll be for sure fun uh, to see in the playoffs with whoever they match up with. At the end of today's standings, like I said, the Nuggets fell to third. The Mavs are in six, so it would be Nuggets-Mavericks in the first round. Luka against Jokic would be uh, pretty sick, and obviously they just played and the Mavs won on that crazy Irving buzzer beater, so it uh, mm. could be a fun bit of a first-round series. I mean, all of those first-round series are going to be fun, but anyway, um, the only other little bit of news-wise thing was that they did come out with a report in the game the other night that Embiid, uh, they still keep saying he's going to be back before the end of the regular season, which uh, seems crazier and crazier by the day, but um, I don't know. It's, it's a weird situation with Embiid, because part of me is like, why even bother like sending him back out there like what you know like it just seems so insane but then the other part of me is like well this happens every year like if he can play just why not go play like nothing's guaranteed it's not like they rest him they're like oh well he'll definitely be fine next year it's like if he's fine to play like whatever you've suffered enough Sixers like then go try to fucking play it's like what's the worst that happens you don't get out of the second round (laughs) <laughs> like, well, he's hurt again i'm like yeah well i guess getting hurt again yeah that didn't really that didn't. Well, no i mean but that but would he, be the logic but I'm, I'm just saying he's always fucking hurt it's not like if you right. rest him now he's it's always something... hurt and you're always getting bounced in the second round so you might right. as well just like do it if again. he says right. he can play like go play yeah he's not gonna be 100 but i mean still it, it'd be scary to see him in a first round series like that wouldn't be that ideal. would be wicked funny if the bucks got like drew them first round he was playing or something need like it. that need yeah. buck sixers doc versus philly i mean oh Oh yeah, there's, there's yeah, just so much cool. that would go into that series. It'd be awesome, but uh, yep, we'll see. Uh, we'll see again. We'll it's they the the fact that they keep saying he's going to be back. I mean, it's getting late early. There's two weeks left in the season. They play like <laughs> eight or nine games. Well, that'd have to be pretty soon. And they said he's already not going to, or he's not going to play in the next road trip. So that would leave like mm-hmm. seven games left. So we'll see. But uh, again, something else to monitor. And then the only thing we had a nice chat about the uh, the Wolves non sale that had come out right oh, yeah, as we were updates kind of on that putting real time. yeah so i mean the updates to that were we i guess kind of missed a huge point of that in our discussion which the fact no. that like yeah <laughs> i know hard to believe that a rod and Lori. so they're already minority owners they were just this sale was going to make them like the majority uh... owners of the team. Like, they've been involved and invested for a while um but now like what you were saying what we were saying is almost like actually happening because now it's getting ugly a Rod was out there saying like we'll fight this for as long as it takes. Like this is wrong. Yeah. We'll fight this for ten years. Uh, Glenn Taylor has basically just like moved on with it and is like throwing in jabs. Like after that win last night, I don't know. He's just like chirping left and right. I guess he's banned. He's taken away like A Rod and Lori's access. They're not allowed to go. Like uh, I forget what the exact oh. like rulings were, but there's certain like places in the arena they no longer have access to. So this uh, <laughs> this is gonna get more and more interesting. I love so. it. And just a massive distraction for a team that's having their best season in, you know, 20 something years. Um, and is trying to do something that the Timberwolves, again, they've made one Western Conference Finals ever in franchise history, and that was with Garnett. And I think like, A-Rod and them, they, so. have, they have to get like uh, balcony tickets or something like that. They, and just be like seen there at the game, just like making a mockery <laughs> of it. Yeah, like, I don't it's know. Getting, it is an interesting, <laughs> it's a it's very interesting thing because I, we don't know the, the legal legalese of it all, but it's like, it certainly it's, sounds like, like we're going it sounds to like learn. They both, each of them think the deal was done, or like, or that one side obviously the deal was done, the other side thinks it wasn't. So it's just like, 
I don't know. It's going to end up having to go to court, right? Like, there's no way this gets settled otherwise. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm look, I pulled up the quotes now from the Shams tweet. I got to read the full article, but he said, so A-Rod's quote, he said, we can be in this fight for five years, ten years, whatever. We're not going to let go. And he also said, it is now personal. Uh, Lori, oh, yeah. the other guy, said, we will use every ounce of effort here to enforce the contract that Glenn broke. And um, then it's yeah. like, Glenn Taylor has barred both from back hallways, arena, and communication with Team SX. <laughs> so, yeah, this is, I lo- this is Well, good. I just love that it's like, like, they're like, we're going to fight this. We're going to court all of this. And the guy who's actually the owner just like, you're banned. Banned. <laughs> yeah. Well, can I go right. ahead and get banned? Right. You're banned. Love, he's trying to take, like, the moral high ground. Be like, oh, like, no. Like, now you can't even, like, come in here and, like, talk to us. It's like, like he hasn't even commented on, like, the contract. He's like, it's like, well, if I'm not the owner, how come you're banned? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, do you oh, think, oh, you, oh, you think it's your team? Well, you're banned, come, so. Yeah. Come in the back then if it's your team. Like, <laughs> why don't you just come over this one little line here if you're the owner? If I if I'm not yeah. the owner, I shouldn't be allowed to be here. Then you yeah. should. So let's let's see what yeah. happens. Pretty That's much. hilarious. Yeah. Oh, so. this is exciting. I, I do hope this does get dragged out five, ten years. This could be this. this I, and I care if the documentary that'll come out about this at some point too. It's gonna be a fun watch. Definitely that's looking forward to it. You're banned. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm so, good. so the owner that you're banned. Yeah, I mean that's. Call the executive, see if they pick up for you. Are you going to, oh, but you're the owner, they're not picking up? Yeah, because you're not the owner, because I'm the owner. I mean, if, yeah, if I went to a game and knew nothing about the situation, it would be hard to argue who certainly looks like they're the owner. Looks like the owner, yeah. <laughs> that guy seems like the owner, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know all the details of contracts, but just looking from a neutral perspective, it certainly yeah. seems like that guy's the owner. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder has like the NBA made any comments on it or anything like that? Or they just they probably I don't stay know out of if it. they have. I mean, they. I, I'm not well, sure. It's like gonna nothing... be, it's going to come to one of those things eventually where if you're Glenn Taylor, you're going to probably be saying to the NBA, like, you need to like say Someone... that like you need to like like the owners' meeting is coming up. Like I'm coming. Is that the right. correct thing for me to be doing? Like <laughs> you know, it's like eventually like all the coups like people have to like. They have to say something. They have to take. Yeah, it's gonna like, legitimize. It's gonna like right. you guys. If you guys don't say it's like it makes it seem like I'm not the owner. Right. No, they have to do something to at least like take a side and like, say like imagine, this is. They, imagine, God, hold this doesn't happen. But imagine <laughs> if like they win the, the finals and it's just like like Aaron's just like trying to get to the trophy. It's like like. <laughs> What do you do? Like, you know, you're security is just like forcefully removing him from like the yeah. celebration. Well, like, like what happens if like security like decides like we like a rod better and they like remove the actual and it's like exactly. it's like an actual coup. It's just like well, you yeah. just got booted, so now now we're the like. What happens if in a few weeks a rod gets all the other executives back? We're actually not not communicating with Glenn Taylor. Like it's a very, I don't know, maybe I'm thinking a little too Game of Thronesy, but it's just like. If they can just convince all the security and executives right. to treat them like the owner, then right. at what point <laughs> possession is nine tenths a law type thing? It's I don't know. Yeah, this is a great story. Probably a little of uh, who's who's signing the checks and this and that. I'm sure Taylor is telling all those same people like you see, they can't even afford to buy the team. Like your yeah, your yeah, job's yeah, safe yeah, with true. me. Yeah, like, yeah, I'll yeah. be king and go carry you all these you want years. Want to take like, your base? Yeah. Uh, this is the race? Who wants funniest race? move. That'll be the next move. It's like Glenn Taylor announces like. Big raise for all arena personnel. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> a ten percent raise for everybody. <laughs> that I can't wait great. until he just decides to sell the team anyway, because I think he's probably going. Like, if he wanted to sell it before, oh, that'd be funny. They, yeah, if they win this thing, he like finally wins some long, hard fought battle, and like it's all settled officially. And then the next day, he's like, "Team's back for sale at like four point five billion." Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, "Hey, Rod, yeah. hit me up. Like, I'll yeah, sell right. it to you guys again. Like, I'll it's sell it to you." Yeah, this yeah, is going to be a story. great story. Yeah, yeah, it already is pretty fascinating. Um, I'm excited to see just how much detail come get, comes out, how messy this can get, and yeah, I'll be curious to see where when the NBA comes out with some kind of statement and like if other owners start commenting because I'm sure they'll at some point be asked or have to say something. And a lot of well, those rich yeah, guys and you got to think too that so, like so. I said, there's going to be like an old guy, there's going to be like a new guard. It's going to be right. interesting. I would think um, so. That's so funny. So they're minority owners, but they just can't. They have no say. It's awesome. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right. So the Celtics uh take on the Hornets. Big revenge game. Mm-hmm. Big revenge game. Uh that's on Monday. That ends the six game road streak. This is at it's at um yeah. Charlotte. So longest road uh, trip of the season. We talk a little bit about where this team is during the Lamella segment, but uh <laughs> go ahead and let us know. Give us a little bit of a preview for this one. Yeah, well, they're nowhere good. Um and if you do remember that overtime loss in Charlotte. 
well, this is a very different looking Hornets team. Um, They've kind of blown things up at the deadline. They traded away Terry Rozier to the Heat. They traded Hayward to the Thunder. They traded P.J. Washington to the Mavericks. Uh, They brought in Grant Hill, Trey Mann, Vasily Micic. Um, Who am I forgetting? Someone else. But a lot of young players. They've basically completely leaned into the tank. Speaking of new owners, uh, there are two new owners who bought the team. Look like they're actually committed to building a basketball team the right way. So while things are kind of ugly for the Hornets now, they've actually got some reasons for optimism in the future as they've fully leaned into the rebuild. But in terms of this for the Celtics game, uh, yeah, it's been pretty ugly for the Hornets. This team cannot really score the basketball consistently. They definitely have hit a home run on Brandon Miller, who looks like an awesome pick. Uh, He's had a great rookie year and looks like a true building block who I think it's already fair to wonder like, okay, is it now kind of his team instead of LaMelo balls? And again, like the longer it takes for LaMelo ball to come onto the court, the more it's going to keep looking that way. But uh, other than Brandon Miller, yeah, this team is, is pretty weak. We'll see a lot of Grant Williams. We'll see, you know, Nick Richards is like really their only big man. Uh, Grant plays a lot of small ball center for them. So I think we'll get a lot of uh, Porzingis with little pops over Grant Williams should be fun. Um, and then beyond that, yeah, I mean, they've got Seth Curry is out for the year for them too. Mark Williams, their other promising young player at center is out for the year. So uh, this is going to be a real skeleton crew that the Celtics are going against. Um, and it's really, you know, Brandon Miller, Miles Bridges, and Nick Richards are maybe the only like promising NBA caliber players who still you say Grant, are taking you the say Grant Williams, right? Oh, and Grant, what we talked about earlier. But yeah, it's uh, it's not a lot of NBA talent on this team. It's really no high-end talent. So, again, this is just kind of being to be one of those games where how seriously do the Celtics take it? I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, you know, we wake up tomorrow and see, like, eight guys are questionable for Monday night or something uh, like that. But, I mean, no, I mean, that's what, that's what we should be doing. The podcasters, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> We're going to have to think of some kind of game to play that. <laughs> they are there. Gonna start Whatever. That. Pritchard show. We got the, the Pritchard no, I'm show. for us. The ball, we we have to go like a game, like, uh, we need voicemails. Chinese corner. Uh, uh, Leave us yeah, some voicemails. Yeah. There you go. If the, if, if, if the injury report comes out tomorrow and half the team's questionable, <laughs> what I want every Chuddy head to do is get on your, get on your computer mm-hmm. and Ask leave us a, a voicemail. Yes. Sounds um, good. All right. Yeah. So again, that, 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 that ends the, the home stretch or the away stretch uh, against the Hornets on Monday. Mm-hmm. We have after that, it'll be seven more games. Six of those are home games. We have six more Gorman games, folks. Appreciate Crazy. it as they're coming. We have only one more away game. It's against the Bucks. That's on TNT too. So tomorrow might or Monday might be the last Drew Carter game of the year too. Wow. Uh, because I don't know if TNT. I feel like when it's on TNT, it's not on the regional. It usually, like sometimes yes, sometimes no. I don't know. There's no. Okay, so the, it may be. If you're listening, Drew, Man. which I know you are, let us know if um yeah. if that's if tomorrow if Monday's your last game. Because uh, stand-up job so far, we'll get into that on well, that. Well, NBC we'll Sports does do the first round of the playoffs too, don't they? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. I think okay. they do. But either way, not many games. I have to either announcer, player, but um, it sounds like we got plenty of time left for both. And that does mean that hopefully there should be some openings in Drew's schedule, so maybe we can work something out, get him on the pod. That would certainly give us something to talk about uh, over mm. this last stretch of games. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. keep your calendar um, open, Drew. <laughs> yes, keep the calendar open. Um, Chuddy heads, keep your Monday open um, for the Celtics game and keep your uh, Tuesday morning open for your Chuddy's Corner listening needs. Um, all right, that's the show. Uh, 104-92 win for the Celtics. Uh, getting back in the win column against the Pelicans. See everyone back here on Monday. Chuddy, enjoy the rest of your birthday. Um, oh, also shout out to our flags. We got some flags. It's flag season now on Chuddy's Corner. If you're watching the YouTube page, mm-hmm. you can see. If you're not watching the YouTube page, go to our YouTube page and subscribe. Uh, if you're not following at Chuddy's Corner on Twitter, make sure you do that. If you're not following at Dugouts on Doug underscore outs on Twitter, follow him. And if you're not following at King Chuddy on Twitter, follow him too. Uh, check out Chuddy's Corner.com, all your Chuddy's information. I posted a blog in the blog game. Um, yeah. It's great blog. Slow Love blog. that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm, you know we're we're trying to get more blogs out there anyway for you so check that out shout out to the sponsor Nick Fredo Real Estate Chuddy I'll see you Monday take care peace out Chuddy Eds.